Where do Christmas trees actually grow? Every single green bump are the counties where more than 50 Christmas trees were grown and sold. Some places obviously sold a lot more than 50 though. The red is apparently though national forests offering Christmas tree permits. That kind of sounds like the funnest way to get one. Get a tree and possibly see Bigfoot. Shockingly, Hawaii grows and sells more commercial Christmas trees than Alaska. How is that even possible? Hawaii is nowhere near the size of Alaska. And I feel like Alaska should just basically be called Christmas tree land. I mean, what else does it have besides this? I'm assuming key word there is commercially. Even popular urbanized counties like San Diego sold more than 3,000 trees. But no other place in the U.S. can compete with Clackamas County in Oregon and Ash County in North Carolina. Love how both big spikes have surrounding medium-sized spikes around them. Which I guess makes sense. It's not like the forest is just going to be restricted to one county. On average, 35 to 40 million Christmas trees are sold in the U.S. every year. Versus in a place like the United Kingdom, they have 8 million sold every year. On another note, the vast majority of artificial Christmas trees are being produced in the Pearl River Delta of China. Rivers are pretty important in the world. Here are the five largest river basins on Earth. Interesting, they can only be found on three of these seven continents. Also, Asia, the largest, isn't included. You'd think they'd have at least one of these. In fifth place, we have the La Plata Basin, which is 3.1 million kilometers squared. In fourth place, there's the Mississippi River Basin, which is 3.2 million kilometers squared. It looks so much larger than the last one, but it's only beaten them out by 0.1. It actually feels like it would actually be larger too. In third place is the Nile River, which is the longest river on Earth, but we're talking at river basins. A river drainage basin is an area drained by a river and all its tributaries. So we're including literally every stream. In second place, we've got the great Congo River Basin at 4 million kilometers squared, but none of these can beat the mighty Amazon River Basin, which apparently discharges well over twice as much water as all the other four. This really goes to explain the vastness of the Amazon rainforest. Graphing different populations of countries versus the actual area they control. So one of the most extreme examples of this is Russia. They are the biggest country on Earth by far in terms of surface area. Yet as we begin to scroll over to that y-axis, as you can see, they only have about 150 million people living in it, which is actually only a little bit above all these other places. Meanwhile, on the opposite end of that spectrum, we have a place like India, over a billion population, yet not a whole lot of surface area. In fact, all the countries in the European Union are a little bit bigger. China probably has the nicest ratio of population to actual physical size. There's 1.4 billion people living in China, as well as they have the third most land on Earth. As you can see, India here is in seventh with about the same amount of population. Pretty much all these countries that are away from the center cluster are doing something pretty interesting just because on average, most of the nations are lying around here. And here's that same chart, except for only the European countries. Turkey, as you can see, I guess is perfectly balanced. Thanos snapped them into perfection. Europe in general seems to be a lot more proportional than the rest of the world. But remember, just because you have a large amount of area doesn't mean humans can live. I mean, just look at a place like Antarctica, for example. Speaking of which, how do people in the US heat their homes? Now, the least popular on the list is with wood. It's nice, but uh, just not super easy to do this all the time. A lot of Northern California is doing that though too. There's the Midwest, which is kind of a mixture between propane and natural gas. Almost all of Chicago, Detroit using natural gas. Actually, pretty much all the big cities are using natural gas. And there's places like Pennsylvania, New York, and New England, which use oil. This is pretty much the only spot in the country where you can find a lot of oil use for heating. What is oil heating? I guess it shouldn't be surprised that I don't know what this is since I don't live in the East Coast. As long as it gets the job done. I'm not trying to freeze in my house. On oh, most of the South, Hawaii, as well as parts of inland here are using electricity. Foreign cuisines that tend to be most popular in each country. Completely unsurprisingly, it is all Italian food. Always has been. Well, up until recently, Latin and Tex-Mex overtakes Italian as America's go-to food order. Now, I'll say that'll probably never happen in a continent like Europe, but it's interesting. Someone who is obsessed with Mexican food, I have tried a lot of Mexican places in Europe. Randomly, my favorite by far was in Slovakia. Don't ask me why. Funny enough, though, the one place that does like Latin food in Europe are the Netherlands. Okay, wait, I don't think that Suriname technically counts as Latin, though, but they are located, obviously, in South America. Don't forget, this is a former Dutch colony. That is probably why the Netherlands love this food. I love the countries not actually picking Italian. There's a lot of interesting things here. North Macedonia with Greek food. Interesting. Armenia with Russian food and Azerbaijan with Iranian. Luxembourg with Portuguese food. I didn't expect that. Then two German-speaking countries really liking that Turkish food. Then there's Italy themselves. Everyone's picking them. They're picking Chinese food. And finally, the British with Indian. Funny to see there's still clearly connections between colonial pasts here. What countries have aircraft carriers? I guess in case um, countries wanted to start the colonization thing again. Remember that aircraft carriers are some of the most important naval assets in the world. They're basically like giant moving fortresses that also 
give you air superiority. You kind of need these if you at all want to be a naval force. So the blue countries only have helicopter carriers. These are obviously going to be a lot smaller ships for helicopters and drones. Still pretty useful if you didn't have anything beforehand. Some more countries with only helicopter carriers, Egypt, as well as Thailand and South Korea. The red countries have fixed wing carriers only. These are larger carriers designed to carry a variety of larger aircrafts. Man, I want to watch Top Gun now. Places like India, Russia, Turkey, Italy, Spain, and the UK have those. Meanwhile, there's only four countries that have both the US, France, China, and Japan. I don't know why Japan's not included in this list, but okay. As of December 2023, there are 47 active aircraft carriers. Man, how can I get a tour of one of these? Is that even possible? The front lines of Europe back during World War I superimposed over the United States of America. This is obviously a map made at that same time as well. So we zoom into the heartland, we can make out a Germany, Austria, Hungary, the Balkans, even the Ottomans down here. There's the Eastern Front where Imperial Germany was fighting Russia. This looks like it stretches all the way from Mississippi to maybe Wisconsin. Yeah, Rig is up here by Minnesota. And then there's the Western European Front. We've got it stretching from Salt Lake City, kind of. Switzerland was neutral. We had to skip over that down to uh, Texas a little bit. Maybe more Oklahoma. I thought Austria was Austin, Texas for a second there. There's also fighting in the Balkans. That's more Texas. I like the extra data they were giving us. New York to Chicago is 910 miles. Meanwhile, Chicago to San Francisco is about 2,300 miles. And then we have the front line miles overlaid with everything. I wish they did the same map for World War II. That'd be even crazier. And this is probably what led to all that. European countries that claim lands outside their borders. These are percentage of people living in these countries that believe there are lands outside their borders that belong to them. And the biggest on the list is Hungary. Oh boy, here we go. Speaking of World War I, yeah, this, this happened after World War I. Second place are the Greeks at 60%, which while we're on this topic, we might as well cover Turkey. Bulgaria is tied with them at 58%. Then it's Russia, surprise, surprise. Then it's Ukraine. Wait, actually, Poland is beating out Ukraine. What does Poland want? There's also Slovakia. And funny enough, things do chill out as you get more and more west. I do like Sweden at 13%, though. They really want Oland back, don't they? I love how this really leads to a lot of speculation. Like, what exactly do these places want the most back? Because out of this 33%, it might be very divided, especially from France. Like, what exactly do they do they need? I wish that was the next follow-up question. The Spanish Civil War, back right before World War II, explained by Google Earth. So here we have, starting in 1936, we have Nationalist Spain versus Republican Spain. Initially, they had a lot more on their side at first. I do love studying about the Spanish Civil War because of the way, like, it kind of changed the borders. It was also a huge precursor, obviously, to World War II. So the front really starts from Galicia, Navarra here, and then I guess they connect. I believe Sevilla is now involved. The islands are split as well. I thought all the islands would be the same. Was Ibiza still a huge tourism place? <laughs> I don't think so. I'm just thinking about all the volunteers that were also involved. Countries outside fighting for one side or the other. Well, yeah, I can definitely see some Italian divisions. Obviously, Mussolini was going to back Franco, Nationalist Spain. Oh, there he is right there. That's what I'm talking about. Man, look at these casualties ticking up. There goes Mustache Man. He's got a division in there too. You know, looking at this really goes to show why uh, Spain was not down to participate in World War II. Well, there's several reasons, but man, obviously the Spanish Civil War right before that was a pretty big sign. Look at casualties on both sides. They were in no place to fight in World War II. Obviously, Nationalist Spain is starting to really win out. Catalonia is holding out and just the eastern side here. They actually continue to hold out until like eventually it was just completely crushed and then Franco takes over. Didn't realize the casualties were so high. Countries visited by Queen Elizabeth. It's probably easier to tackle this map by first just looking at the countries she didn't visit. Kind of interesting that she never went to Cuba. Obviously, I get when Fidel was in charge, I understand why she didn't go. But remember, that lady lived for a long time. She could have gone to Cuba way before that. Decades before that, really. I guess maybe at that point she didn't see a reason why. She pretty much didn't go to any former Soviet states, or except for the Baltics. She did go to Finland, interestingly. Remember, she lived like three decades after the Soviets fell, so she had some opportunity there as well. That's the interesting thing about this map. Again, she was queen for so long. Like, she had a long time. I can see why she never went to North Korea, as well as a large part of Africa, but nothing is more surprising than Egypt. How did she never go to Egypt? Again, I know that there are certain decades where it's like, oh, she cannot go to Egypt. It'd probably be a bad idea, but she had a lot of decades to choose from, especially because she went to Sudan. She went to Tanzania. She went to Kenya. She went to Mozambique. She did not hit a whole lot of Latin American countries, but she did hit a good amount of North America. If she went to Denmark. She basically kind of went to Greenland, but okay, I'm glad you kept it separate. Never Taiwan. I think an interesting thing about that existence playing that role is like just visiting a country is kind of a political act in itself. So you do have to be extremely careful. Still 117 foreign countries visited. Holy crap. And Greece is not one of them. Not even for a vacation. Which state has the best credit score? <laughs> Let's just get right on into it. Apparently it's Minnesota with people on average having a 742 score. 
Whoa, that's a lot of really responsible people. Side note, didn't realize how many countries also use a credit score system. On the opposite end of the spectrum, Mississippi has the worst credit score on average, which 680 is not that bad, but think about all the people that are pulling it way below. Because remember, this is on average. Most of the northern states in this area seem to be very financially responsible. Washington also doing a pretty good job. Florida is the outlier in the deep south at 707. Really weird mixture of colors here in the southwest. Arizona's average. New Mexico's bad. Nevada is bad. I mean, are these really bad? They're kind of throwing colors around, but it's not that much of a difference. 721 and 702. Hawaii, of course, is going to have to have some good credit because that place is expensive. Didn't think Alaska would be in the green, though. Well, I guess you can't really live in Alaska if you don't have some money. You'll just die immediately because of the cold. Is that why these people have so much good money? Or they're financially responsible? Because if they're not responsible, the heaters turn off and then they, they don't make it. My patrons on Patreon, thank you. Carino is best girl. Sebi, if you hear this, I love Jack you. Jack Draven's annoying friend. I can't sleep without Drew's Drew voice. Drew on your dad, back with the milk. Look outside. Amateur archaeology. A fat normal. Carmel S. Frederick Tillman. Inquisitor Zero. Joe Mexican John Denver. Carino is best girl. Lemons Lines. Luxembourg Lover. Orton 5 Robert Ryan e. the Pie. The Great Ralphie. And Zany Boy 